Hey there, math students. So yesterday we did our spiral review and we brought a little bit back with the combining integers and the distributing. And today we are going to go a step farther with our equations. Today our I can statement says, I can solve equations with, you guessed it, distributing. Yay, okay. So we're gonna distribute and then we're gonna solve equations the same way that we have been doing. Let's start with our warm-up. It says, are these expressions equivalent? If so, how do you know? Well, I can't tell by looking at it, so let's distribute. The five is gonna go to everything inside the parentheses. I don't think you guys have seen anything like this where there's three terms inside the parentheses, but it works just the same way. The five is gonna be distributed to each of them. So five times x equals five x. Five times negative two y equals negative 10 y. And five times 10, I can't talk today, five times 10 equals 50. And look over here, five x minus 10 y plus 50. Yep, they're the same, so that's a yes. And how do you know? Well, because we know how to distribute. Let's keep going. There's often more than one way to get the correct answer or to write an expression. Knowing lots of ways to get the correct answer can be a very useful thing. This is true. Recall that one property that is used to rewrite expressions is called the distributive property. Distributive property of multiplication. More specifically, this is the ability of multiplication to distribute over addition and subtraction. And then it says few, very few operations have this ability, but distributing and its opposite, that's called factoring. You don't need to worry about that, but just in case you're curious, the reverse process of distributing is called factoring, um, are very useful. Let's go to example one. Solve the equation. Two times r minus three equals negative 12. Okay guys, it's an equation. What are we gonna do first? Well, we know we wanna get the variable by itself. So we have to get rid of the two and the three, but there's this weird setup with the parentheses and all. So here's what you need to do first you need to distribute. Let's get rid of those parentheses first, and then you can get rid of the other numbers, get r by itself, and solve the equation. Okay, let's go ahead. So two is gonna to distribute to the r and to the negative three. So you're gonna get two r time, I mean minus six, sorry. So two times r is two r, and two times negative three is negative six, or minus six. And that's gonna be equal to negative 12. Now once you get that, 2r minus 6, that is just a two-step equation. You guys know how to solve that. So which one are we going to get rid of first? We know we need to keep the r there. Do we need to get rid of the 2 first or get rid of the minus 6 first? We want to get rid of that minus 6, that number that's more separated away from the variable, not the one that's attached to the variable. So get rid of minus 6 by doing plus 6 on both sides. You're going to be left with 2r equals, that's going to give us negative 6. And now we have to get rid of the two so that the r is alone. Just divide by two on both sides and you're gonna get r equals negative three. And that's how it goes. So if you know how to distribute and if you know how to solve an equation, this should go pretty smoothly for you. Generally, we will distribute the multiplication to get rid of the parentheses and then solve the equation, definitely. So step one, do all your distributing. Step two, solve the equation, every time. Let's go ahead and do a few more examples. Okay, so what if we have negative three distributed to all of this stuff? Well, let's go ahead and do that. So negative three times four x is gonna give us negative 12 x. Negative three times one is gonna give us minus three, negative three, whichever way you wanna say it. And then we're still equal to negative 63. Okay, we're done with those parentheses, they're gone. Now we need to get x by itself. We're gonna get rid of that minus three first because it's not attached to the x. We wanna save the one attached to the x for last. So instead of minus three, we're gonna do plus three to get rid of it. And we're gonna be left with negative 12 x equals, let's see, negative 63 plus three equals negative 60. And now we need to get rid of negative 12. Let's just get rid of it all together, meaning like the negative and the 12. Let's get rid of it all together by dividing by negative 12 on both sides. Those are gonna cancel out. And you're left with x equals five. Positive five, because a negative divided by a negative equals a positive. 
And that's our final answer there. Okay, let's try B. So what is our first step? Get rid of those parentheses, good. How are we gonna get rid of them? We're gonna distribute, let's do it. So five goes to two in and five goes to one. 25 equals, okay. Five times two in gives us 10 in. Five times one equals five, positive five. So I'm gonna put a plus. And now, what is gonna go away first? What do we need to get rid of first, the 10 or the five? Go ahead and pause your computer and see if you can solve this by yourself. So hopefully you got rid of the five first. That's what needs to go, go away first because you don't wanna get rid of the one attached to the 10 first. You wanna get rid of the number that's not attached to the, the n. I may have said that wrong, I'm sorry. But get rid of the number that is not attached to the variable first. We're gonna get rid of it by subtracting it in this case. And 25 minus five equals 20 equals 10 n. Now we get rid of the 10 by dividing. And so it looks like two is gonna be equal to n. Did you get that? Good work. If you didn't get it, see if you can follow my steps and figure out where your mistake was. Let's go on to C. All right, in C we have negative five times one plus z equals 150. What's step one? Distribute, good. Let's distribute. All right, and that's gonna give us negative five and that one's gonna give us minus five z equals 150. All right, so what do we get rid of first? That minus five or that minus five? Get rid of the one that's not attached to the Z. Good, and if you wanna pause your video right now and try to solve it yourself, that would be awesome. We're gonna get rid of that negative five by adding it to both sides. That will cancel out. You're left with negative five Z equals 155. Now we're gonna divide by the negative five to get rid of it and leave our z by itself. And we're gonna get z equals, oh boy, well, give me a second, one, five, five, five times three is 15, five times one, let's do 31. And don't forget the negative because you have one positive number, one negative here. All right, z equals negative 31, is that what you got? Good work if you got that one. If you didn't, look through the steps, see if you can figure out where it went wrong. Okay, I'm just gonna run through the rest of these and then I will send you on your way to work on your assignment. Okay, let's do our distributing first here. 18 equals negative 72y minus six times 15, what is that? I think it's 90. Okay, we're gonna get rid of the 90 first. That's gonna give us 108 equals negative 72y you know what, I did something wrong here. So what is six times nine? Silly me, it's 54. 54. So 108 equals negative 54y. There we go. And we're gonna divide by that negative 54. And that's gonna give us negative two equals y. All right, let's go on to part E. The negative two is gonna distribute here. So negative two times eight n, negative 16 n. Negative two times five is negative 10 equals 54. Okay, let's get rid of that 10 first. So we're gonna add it to both sides. Negative 16n equals 64. And now we're gonna divide by negative 16 to get rid of that. And n is gonna equal negative four. Okay, good. Couple more left. Six is, t is multiplying by negative five minus two x, so let's distribute. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. 6 times negative 2x is negative 12x. And that is all equal to negative 42. So let's get rid of the number that is not with the x, and that would be the 30. Right now it's negative 30, so we're going to do the opposite. We're going to add 30 to both sides. That one will cancel out to 0, and you're left with negative 12x equals negative 12. Aha! Let's divide by the negative 12 to get rid of it because that's the opposite, the opposite of multiplication is division. And so x is gonna equal one. There we go. One last example for us. Negative times y minus 10 equals negative 15. I know this looks weird to have the negative there. If you want to, think of that as a negative one. And then that negative one is what's distributing there. So negative one times y is gonna be negative y or you could put negative one y, both are the same thing. And then negative one times 10 is gonna be positive 10, equals negative 15. 
Um, what do we get rid of first, the negative or the 10? Get rid of that 10. It's adding 10 now, we're gonna get rid of it by subtracting. So we're left with negative y equals negative 25. And now we have a negative variable. The variable's alone, but there's still a negative there. So it's not alone enough. We gotta get rid of the negative. You can think of it two different ways. You could just divide by negative one on both sides because that negative y is the same thing as negative one y. So if you do that, you get y equals 25. Or if you want to, when you have negative y equals negative 25, you could just think of it as taking the opposite of both sides because what you're doing to one side, you're doing to the other. You're taking the opposite of both of them. So you could just make it a positive y and a positive 25. If you want to do that, you could do it that way. Whatever makes sense to you, as long as your answer is y equals 25. Okie dokie guys, so this is gonna be your assignment. For today, we are just going to do numbers one through 10. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Thanks for watching, bye.